The use of stem cells in research has been a topic of intense ethical debate for years, with many questions and misconceptions about the origin and use of these remarkable cells. In this video, we're going to delve into the original paper that described the isolation of human embryonic stem cells and uncover the truth. To fully grasp the origin of stem cells, we need to delve into the beginnings of human life. We all start out as a single fertilized egg. In this stage, called the cleavage stage, the cell starts dividing to form a ball of many smaller cells called the blastula. These cells are totipotent, which means they are capable of forming any cell in the body. These cells then begin differentiating or turning into the different types of cells in your body to form the next developmental stage called a blastocyst. These cells inside the blastocyst continue to differentiate and form three main types of cells called germ layers, labeled endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. After this stage, more dramatic differentiation and structural changes happen, ending with a fully formed human baby. Human embryonic stem cells, or HESCs, come from the totipotent cells of the earliest stages in the human embryo and can turn into nearly any type of cell in the human body, a state called pluripotent, but unlike totipotent cells, cannot form a full organism. For example, human embryonic stem cells have the potential to turn into any of the three germ layers. Endoderm, from which cells of the gut are derived, mesoderm, from which cartilage, bone, and muscle cells are derived, and ectoderm, from which brain and skin cells are derived. For this reason, stem cells are valued in research for their potential in medicine to replace damaged or injured tissues like cardiac or brain. Additional types of stem cells have been discovered, induced pluripotent stem cells or iPSCs that come from a biopsy of adult cells and then are genetically reprogrammed back to pluripotent stem cells. However, human embryonic stem cells still have considerable value in research and medicine because they do not contain the artificial genetic manipulation required for iPSCs. But there is huge controversy surrounding the use of these cells in research since they ultimately come from human embryos. Current research that uses human embryonic stem cells generally uses cell lines. Cell lines are stalks of cells that grow and divide on their own. Cell lines are generated from a group of cells that is isolated and maintained, so no new embryos are destroyed in the process. They were ultimately derived from very early stage embryos nearly 25 years ago. But still, they were ultimately derived from a human embryo. How is this done? Let's take a look at the original paper published in 1998 that generated the human embryonic stem cell lines that are used in research today. Human embryos in the cleavage stage that had been produced through in vitro fertilization were donated by individuals at their informed consent. The embryos were then grown in the lab to the stage of blastocysts and the inner cell masses, the part of the blastocyst that will ultimately go on to form the fetus. Of 14 of these embryos were isolated. The authors found that five of these would grow on their own in the petri dish and could be successfully cultured and maintained in the lab. Three of these cell lines, labeled H1, H13, and H14, had an XY or male genetic composition. The other two, H7 and H9, were XX or female genetic makeup. The finding that these five lines could be grown in the lab was a valuable discovery because cells don't always just grow and divide indefinitely. The lifespan of cellular colonies is determined in large part by telomere length, which is a structure at the end of chromosomes protecting them from degradation. The authors observed that these stem cell lines possessed high levels of telomerase activity. Telomerase is a ribonucleoprotein that adds DNA segments to the telomere length, maintaining it. This is likely why the cell lines were able to grow indefinitely on the plastic dishes, a state called immortalized. The authors confirmed that the cell lines consistently showed surface markers such as stage-specific embryonic antigen 4, which is a surface marker expressed in stem cells. The stem cell lines created by the scientists possessed all of the incredible qualities of pluripotency, but how could they be sure? Well, they took things to the next level by injecting the cells into mice and found that they produced teratomas, fascinating tumors that contain a mix of different cell types, including gut, bone, cartilage, skin, and muscle cells all in one place. But wait a minute, isn't the point of stem cells to heal and repair tissues? How did they end up causing cancer here? Exact timing and many cues, both chemical and physical, influence what kinds of cells stem cells would differentiate into and how they will grow. For example, when the cells became overgrown on the petri dish and piled up, they spontaneously differentiated into different cell types within masses. Understanding how such processes work and the mechanisms that enable control over cellular fate, meaning what types of cells pluripotent cells will ultimately turn into, is a key area of research for determining how to repair tissues and reverse cancerous processes. 
Diseases like Parkinson's and type 1 diabetes result from loss of cell function in just a few types of cells. The ability to precisely guide cells towards a desired type of cell could open up valuable avenues for clinical therapies. Much of the stem cell research today uses these human embryonic stem cell lines that are already in existence or induced pluripotent stem cells, which don't involve embryos. Other fields of research, though, indeed conduct experiments with donated early-stage embryos left over from IVF. Such research could, of course, yield valuable discoveries in technology and medicine, but we must always remain ethically vigilant as we do not yet understand accurately all of the complex mechanisms that control cellular life, death, and human development. Please don't forget to subscribe to help this channel get off the ground, and remember, 